If we take supernaturalism seriously, then we can entertain the possibility that your consciousness is not necessarily dependent on your body, in particular on your brain. When we leave the consensual world and enter the dream world, everything changes. The consensual world seems to recede from us and we enter another place that is not consistent. This world does not have continuity, a definitive map or geography. The laws of science do not seem to apply in this place and people we encounter in this world are not consistent. Indeed, we may encounter people who we know to be gone. We may find that we can fly. We may meet mythical creatures and encounter strange places and locations. Time similarly seems to become elastic and malleable. This is the idea that consciousness could leave its bodily shell and travel to other locations, both within the external world that we all seem to share and much more exotic places that are just as real. It is out-of-body experience, term that is cumbersome and negatively colored. The new term is exomatic, far more precise word that covers all experiences in which consciousness seems to be outside of the body. We understand only one world, the physical world, world where we can travel by using our bodies. This world is consistent. We close our eyes and it's unchanged when we open them. Consensual world. We share this world with other living beings and inanimate objects, all of which seem to exist in three-dimensional world. However, when we leave this consensual world and enter the dream world, everything changes. Now we enter the Wonderland, and I will show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Here we enter another place that is not consistent. This world does not have continuity. The laws of physics does not seem to apply and people we encounter in this world are not consistent. Concept of time is lost here. Firm believers of this supernatural concept tried to prove out-of-body experience for many years. Experiments were done by many scientists with respected degrees from America and Europe in 80s, 90s and 2000s. Some representatives of science community are sure that consciousness exists outside of the brain and they base this opinion on many experiments. One such experiment was to prove near-death experience with subsequent out-of-body experience. To prove the thesis, randomized cards were placed on top of the medical equipment in the resuscitation room of the hospital, place where patients who suffered a cardiac arrest are worked upon to save their lives. The idea is that monitors are above the eye level of the person standing up and cannot be seen by anyone in the room. If patient had an out-of-body experience, less dying during a heart attack, it was possible that from an elevated and disembodied position they would see the cards and describe them if survived the trauma. Experiment lasted for five years and only eight individuals reported out-of-body experience. And none of them reported seeing cards. Why no one saw cards can be easily explained by the fact that during this traumatic event the patient will be more concerned about what was happening to them than spotting cards in odd places. These are explanatory excuses of why experiment failed. The problem actually is the methodology of the experiments to prove that consciousness continues after clinical death. Overall, out-of-body experience is described as a dream state where subjects can neither read things nor perceive numbers. To believe that body and mind are separate entities, you need to be careful because skeptics will aim to the failed methodology of the experiment and conclude that we are dealing with simply hallucination. Methodology is a factor. Why it is that after all these years and many attempts, no clear proof of conscious awareness existing outside of body has been found. We are not mentioning that experiments must be performed in controlled conditions. Overall, such experiment is complicated by itself and we have to keep in mind that we are dealing with death and it aims only once. And still, firm believers are not disappointed and proof of consciousness existing outside of the mind is provable. But let's make a step and give out-of-body experiences a plausibility.
It must be a phenomenon that involves sensory perception by unknown process. Usually sensory means seeing and hearing. So when we dream, we perceive images and sounds and all is processed in the main processing unit, brain. So here comes the challenge. Out-of-body experience is obviously out-of-body by the definition, and there is no physical brain to present information to consciousness. How vision and sound transforms into information person receives. If veridical out-of-body experiences are real, and not simply hallucinatory state, in this scenario the brain is not the location of the consciousness, and even more amazing is that consciousness does not need the physical body to continue existing. Now, this for modern science to prove is a challenge and will need more than evidence presented by subjective experiences. As it is well known, the plural of the anecdote is not evidence, but how to be with people that never saw or never heard. Their physical body lacks ability to receive visual or audio information. Here I mean blind and deaf. One famous example was a girl who had been born extremely prematurely and too much oxygen had been given to her after her birth, destroying her optic nerve. Result is blindness. Long story short, she had two near death and out of body experiences. Girl's name was Wiki Amipek. Her case is covered with biblical faith and spirituality, ignoring factual science, not holding basic scientific criticism. Facing Ripper is experience that takes place during a particularly stressful and disturbing time. It is no surprise that in such state, unusual psychological perceptions manifest. So, more plausible theory is that near-death experiences are simply a brain-generated illusion to help the person to cope with the distress and trauma of nearing death. Singularly most complex object in the universe is human brain. In 21st century much about this wonderful piece of organic engineering is a mystery. The greatest mystery about this organ is how it brings about self-conscious awareness. For example, let's take a section of a brain material and view it through a microscope. What we find is a dense network of cells. Most of these will be glial cells. And role of these cells is to glue the brain structure together and ensure it keeps in shape. However, Dotted among these glial cells are neurons that are adapted to send, receive and carry electrical impulses. Each neuron has its central, usually star-shaped section where the cell nucleus is located. Spreading out from this central body are long, thin tendrils that vary in length. These tendrils reach out and can receive or send electrochemical signals from as many as 10,000 other neurons. When a nerve cell is activated, an electrical current runs along the nerve fiber and releases a chemical substance called a neurotransmitter. There are many different chemicals that act as neurotransmitters. They play essential role in cognitive processes, transmitting information including signals of pain. To keep signals of pain in check, organism has a group of internally generated drugs called endorphins. These are the body's own opiates, and as well as controlling pain, they can also bring about euphoria and hallucination. Speaking of hallucinations, sure you heard about dimethyl tryptamine, DMT, a molecule discovered in a sample of human brain tissue. This meant that chemical had some form of neurological function. At the time of discovery, it had no known receptors within the neurons and therefore could not be considered as a neurotransmitter. It took 37 years to discover right receptor. Dimetryltryptamine is an internally generated neurotransmitter that has evolved within the brain. It is the most powerful hallucinogenic drug known to man, and human organism creates it naturally. Here we are not talking about narcotics, substances that are alien to human body that are dangerous simply because the human body is not designed to cope with the side effects. I am not going to focus much on DMT here, you can familiarize yourself on the white web. Only thing I'll add is that DMT has profoundly strong psychotropic properties, i.e. mind altering. Theory is that approaching death, the pineal gland releases DMT 
and brings about the near-death experience, bringing up exomatic involvement. Proponents of this contact describe it as absolutely real, because there is no sensation of dreaming. Still, consciousness needs brain in order to be, and to be outside of the brain is simply impossible. We can follow this logical explanation until we face quantum physics, without the strings and parallel universes, that for the most of the general public is considered as ideas of science fiction.